All right, so this stream starting in just a minute here. I'm going to test my audio, just making sure everything is working. Test, test, one, two, test, test. All right, folks, welcome to the stream. We'll be starting here in just a minute. Welcome, Mr. Birchie, by the way. Uh, that is my usual streaming schedule on Saturdays at 9 p.m. on the Discord channel. We are live tonight at 8.30 p.m., so you are correct. Welcome, welcome. Um,
We'll be starting in just a minute here. We'll give it another 30 seconds or so to see if anybody joins us and we'll be kicking this stream off. As always, I'll be keeping an eye on the YouTube comments for questions, and I'm live here on the Discord channel for any questions live on there as well. So please ask questions as we go along. Kicking the stream off here in just a second. All right, folks, welcome. We are live here with Ikoria Lair of Behemoths a box opening. And we are going to first start talking quickly here about our mechanics and the types of cards you can expect to see here with this box opening. Um, just uh, I'm not going to go too in-depth. There are a number of podcasts that have been done about the in-depth mechanics and the kinds of things that you could expect to see. Lots of really in-depth interactions. I just want to talk briefly about what you might expect to see in our box tonight. Um, what kinds of cards they've created, the types of mechanics that they've done. Ikoria is a new set, a new plane we've never been to before, so this is something new for all of us. Um, Ikoria is a monster plane. The idea is that um, the entire plane is monsters versus humans, so the humans are struggling to survive while uh, the monsters are constantly adapting to the things that the humans are doing to fight them and constantly changing and upgrading and it, it, um, becoming stronger to fight those humans. So let's go ahead and scroll down here and take a look at a few of the things that we can expect to see here from the Quarry Layer of Behemoths. So first off, uh, one of the big things that they've done, and I actually have one of the cards here, on, um, and I'll show it to you once we get started, um, is they've partnered with the company that makes the Godzilla movies. And they've done um, specialty cards, where the cards actually have a standard card in the set um, that has a regular magic name and magic card art. Um, but then there's promo versions of those cards that look like... Um, they look like Godzilla movie characters. Now, I'm not super familiar with the Godzilla movie franchises. However... Um, there's lots of different characters that we can expect to see, and I'm going to show you some of those as we go through here. So, the Godzilla series monster cards are only available in certain places. There's only certain places that you can see them. Now, please give me some feedback here to make sure you guys are seeing what I'm talking about, because I'm not seeing it here on my screen. You guys should be seeing this uh, information that I'm showing you here. I do want to make sure that it is live. You can see me. And you can hear me here. You guys can see and hear everything I'm talking about. Just give me some feedback here. You guys can see and hear I'm talking about the Godzilla Limit Series Monster Cards. You can see the screen in the background here. Okay, good. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, so um, Godzilla series monster cards uh, only available in certain places. You're going to get one as a, um, a promo card for buying a box. I do have one of those here. You also get one as a box topper. So that's inside the box. Inside the box is a box topper, um, which is a special type of card. They haven't, don't do this very often, actually. This is something that they're doing relatively new for this set where there's a, a special card inside the box, one of a, a certain series of cards you can get where you're going to get the Godzilla monster version. Um, and yeah, I know, I'm not a Godzilla nerd. I should be, I have looked into it a little bit more from uh, this set specifically, but maybe you guys can educate me a little bit more. So um, otherwise, from what I understand, and the information has not been super clear, I won't expect to see any other Godzilla series cards in this box. 
Um, the other Godzilla series cards are available if you buy collector's boosters. Now we're not going to get into those in depth tonight because I don't have any of those. Each collector's booster costs about twenty to twenty-five dollars, depending on where you get or where you get it from, and those cost a fair bit more. Or those are cost a fair bit more, but they do give you a lot of other options, other ways to get fancy cards. Uh, and there's more Godzilla series cards in there as well. Uh, other fancy cards we can expect to see in here are promo series arts. Um, and in this set, the promo series arts are uh, comic book style arts. So we can see some cards that have a standard card type, but is um, the new art is a comic book art. And so we'll see if we pull a few of those and we can see what the comic book art of the card look like. So we've got our Godzilla series cards. Uh, and we also have comic book art. So a few different types of cards we can expect to see. Now some of these are very special. Some of these are very rare. Um, foil versions of them will be very rare. So it really depends on what we get um, and what it looks like. So here's a list here you can see. Um, there's a chart, I'm not gonna go through this in detail, of what the Kaiju is, the alternative card title, and the original card. So each card has a card you can get in the set, for example, here, Huntmaster Liger, and then the alternative card, the card that is the Godzilla series version of it. Um, the mechanics information you need to know is these two cards, as far as the magic game is concerned, are identical. This one and this one are identical. There's no difference. And you'll actually notice in the, the name bar at the top, this one says King Caesar Ancient Guardian. Directly below that, if you can see it, it might be very kind of small on your screen, it does say Huntmaster Liger below it. Um, that means that if you have two King Caesars in your deck and two Huntmaster Ligers, you now actually technically have four Huntmaster Ligers. So you can't have four of this card and four of this card. It's four total between them because they act as if they're the same card. Um, so these are technically promo arts of these cards here. That's how it works. All right, so we're going to scroll past that. This is the, the promo cards. These are the ones. This essentially is the list of the different types of cards that I might expect to get in my box topper inside the box once we open it up here. All right, so we're going to scroll past that here. Punch cards. This is a, a new mechanic they're doing as well where we can get um, counters on creatures that indicate that they temporarily have a certain type of, of attribute. So again, the monsters are fighting the humans, the humans are fighting the monsters, and the monsters are constantly adapting to fight the humans. One of the ways we're showing that is a monster can get flying temporarily, or lifelink temporarily, or vigilance temporarily. So we show that being temporary by a card that will say, give X creature a flying counter. So these are actually punch cards. These will be in the packs, you'll see them tonight. And then um, these little counters punch out of the card and then you can use them to show that you're giving something flying temporarily and then take it off. They're pretty cool. All right, other themes and mechanics. Um, big mechanics that you're gonna notice yeah, is mutate. Uh, and mutate is one of the bigger, more complicated things you're gonna see in this set. Mutate is, uh, let's go up one of our specialty creatures here, had it, so you'll see it a little bit better here. If I show you here, Huntmaster Liger has a cost of three and a white to pay a three for. Um, and it has an ability here, whenever this creature mutates, other creatures you control get plus X, plus X till end of turn, where X is the number of times this creature is mutated. It also has a mutate cost. This mutate cost is instead two and a white. To mutate, you may cast this spell for its mutate cost. And you may then put it over or under target non-human creature you control. So this can get complicated. And again, I'm not going to get into it in super detail tonight because that's not the point of this stream. But if you put Huntmaster Liger over a 2-2 bear that has Trample, for example, the card is now Huntmaster Liger. And it has Huntmaster Liger's attack and toughness but it then has all of the abilities of all the cards below it. So, Huntmaster Liger goes on top of a 2-2 bear with Trample. Huntmaster Liger is now a 3-4 with Trample. Okay, if you put Huntmaster Liger below, under the 2-2 bear with Trample, Huntmaster Liger uh, no longer exists. It's a 2-2 bear with Trample, and 
whenever this creature mutates, other creatures you control get plus X plus X till end of term, where X is the number of times this creature is mutated. So the creature on top is what matters for the name, the creature type, the cost, the power, the toughness, that kind of stuff. But all of the abilities and text boxes and um, uh, tokens, that kind of stuff, that all um, comes from all the cards below it. So you can mutate many times um, and make a whole stack of creatures. This does mean that you can get two for one or three for one and four for one. If you kill the top creature, all the creatures below kind of go along with it. There's lots of intricate rules along with this based on what you um, mutate onto and what you mutate with and how they combine and what different effects that come from that. Um, that's all in rules, documents and whatnot. We're not gonna get into super depth of that tonight, but it's a really cool mechanic that lets you kind of show that your creatures are adapting and becoming more powerful over time. All right, so that's mutate. Another one of our themes and mechanics here is uh, companion. Companion uh, is a deck building rule um, that allows you to have one of the 10 companions um, as a special card in your deck. Let's see if we can pull up one of our companions here. Let's see if they're gonna show me one of our our, our companions here. Here we are. Let's pull up uh, Garuda. He's one of our fancy companions. Garuda is normally a four hybrid blue or black, hybrid blue or black, six, six. And his effect is when he enters the battlefield, each player puts the top four cards of the library into their graveyard. Put a creature card with an even converted mana cost from among those cards onto the battlefield under your control. That's powerful enough. His companion ability says, for him to be your companion, your starting deck contains only cards with even converted mana costs. So if you want to play him just as a card in your deck, you can ignore the, that text. If you want to play him as a commander, you can ignore that text. And if you want to play him as your companion, you must meet that restriction. If your starting deck contains only cards with even converted mana costs, Gairuda can now be your companion. What's that mean? That means that he gets to sit outside of your library while you're playing, and he gets to be special. He now lives outside your library, and you may cast him at any time during the game from that outside the game space right into the battlefield. Now, once you've done that, he's like any other card. He can be killed, he can go to the graveyard, he can be exiled, and once that happens, he's he's not special anymore. It's not like a commander. Once he's dead, he's dead. Once he's exiled, he's exiled. It's not special anymore. Um, so that companion text only matters for him to be your companion. If you want to use him in any other way, you can completely ignore that companion text. And they made a cycle of 10 of them, one for each of the two colored pairs. Um, and each of them has a different companion text. So for example, Rumori the Collector says, for him to be your companion, each non-land card in your starting deck shares a, a card type. So they're all um, artifacts, or they're all creatures, or something along that line. Okay, so that's companions. Um, companions can get kind of complicated as well, but again, the biggest thing to remember is you only have to meet the companion text if you're going to use them as your com companion. Okay, so let's go back up here. Other mechanics we're gonna to touch on here, we talked about keyword counters. Um, we have human tribal, so again, the two halves of this set are one half is the monsters getting more powerful and mutating to fight the humans. The other half is seeing the humans becoming more adept at fighting monsters, working together and, and fighting harder and learning new technology to fight those monsters. Um, we also have a, a special set of lands. There's a rare land cycle that gives us uh, the ability to tap for three different colors. And we're going to see those are pretty, pretty pricey and are very good cards as well. So that's about all I really wanted to go over here today. Um, you can always go to this article here and uh, scroll through lots of information in here about um, what's available in Aquaria. I just wanted to give you a quick preview here so you could see what to expect before um, we jumped into opening up our boxes. So let's get into taking a look at the box and what the box looks like. So our box, the, what I have for you here is uh, I've got the box. Uh, this is actually our Godzilla card. This was our promo for buying the box. 
I'll show you this here real quick. Let's take this out of the sleeve so you can see it. This is our Godzilla card. This is Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Uh, this is a pretty cool card. I actually really like this card here. Uh, it's shiny. It's cool looking. Legendary creature, dinosaur, 7-3 trample. Lethal damage dealt to creatures you control is determined by their power rather than their toughness. So you got this one. You can see what one of the, um, the Godzilla cards looks like. Um, uh, so we're going to set that on this side over here then. We have our box here. Also over on the side here, you'll notice a list of prices. Right now, our list of prices is showing all the promo cards. We want to see what the promo cards are going for. So we can see what kind of promo card I get when I open up this box here. And um, we're going to check out which one I get, compare it to the price list, and see if I get any of the ones that are actually worth something. Um, and if I don't, then that's okay too. And then... Um, after that, I'll put up a list of prices for the average, ever, the other cards in this set, and we'll talk about how I'm going to separate up the cards, and you guys can help me keep an eye out for expensive cards in this set. Okay, okay. so there we go. Get rid of the wrapper, and let's open up our box. All right, so here we have our box topper. You can see that right here in the front. Now, I have seen a lot of people talking about this box topper. Um, being poorly packaged, coming across bent and, and twisted when it comes out of the box, or um, being already warped because it's foil when it comes out as well. So far, uh, mine actually looks pretty good. I don't see any major issues with it right now. So that's good. I'm glad to see it's not looking bad. So we're going to keep an eye over there on the side. Um, that's our list of our, our top cards our most pricey cards and we're hoping to pull one of those so you keep an eye out for them if you see that i pull something really really good then you let me know and we'll go from there all right let's see what we get pop this one up and and what do we get what do we get then be careful with this one because you never know it could be worth what's that say like 37 bucks or something over there that'd be nice wouldn't it all right toss that out of the way and we got <laughs> okay, this card is special. All right, so there's actually a story behind this card. I'm kind of excited I got this card. I'm actually going to put it in a, um, a sleeve right away here because this is a special card. This is Space Godzilla Death Corona. So this card has a story. You will never see this card again. This card is um, only available right now and will never be available again. In fact, um, this this card was created long before this uh, when they were making Ikoria, and um, this card, you know, was designed two, three years ago. And when the coronavirus thing started, they realized that the name of this card, again, this is, let's see if you guys can even see this here, Space Godzilla, Death Corona. Um, they realized that the name was a really, really unfortunate name, all things considered. So let's let me move this out of the way here. I'm going to try and, and get my camera a little closer for you guys so that when I'm opening these packs, now that we're, we're out of our, our other system here, we can see us a little bit better here. Okay, so this card here, they, they've changed the name. They're not printing this card again. You'll never see it again in Magic Arena. The name has been changed. Um, it's impossible to get this card again. Only version of this card you'll ever see is ones being opened right now from the brand new packs. So um, I don't think it's worth all that much. What's it right now? $18, $19. Um, price might go up, might go down. It's hard to say, but I'm going to hang on to this one because this is a collector's item. This is a, a, a one, and, one and done collector's item. In fact, we're actually going to put it into a... A hard sleeve because this is something that you'll never see again and it's a, a moment in time here remembering what we've been through together so we'll set that guy aside pretty sweet okay so let's switch over our price list here to the one that we're going to be using moving forward here and that should work all right so you guys have a job and your job is keep an eye on that price list over there. We've got all the prices um, for the top cards from like $2 and up. And as you open the packs here, we're going to look for the really good ones. So we're just going to go through here and uh, see what we come across as you go through open packs. I'm going to 
blow through the commons for the most part, unless I get something that's really exciting. And then I've got a system when I open up packs for the most part where I just stack commons, uncommons, rares, and mythics. And then next to that, I stack my jackpot cards. So I put all foils and anything that's on that list that's a top a top selling card is really worth keeping. So commons, uncommons, rares, and mythics, jackpot cards. I put four piles and we go from there. So let's get started. Open up some packs and see what we get here. All right. I'm going to put them in front of the camera here so you guys can see them. If you see anything exciting, let me know. All right, so we've got cycling cards. Cycling cards are another thing in this set. Um, they've, they've done cycling a number of times in the past, but um, it's a new thing that they're coming back with over here, which is really cool. Love cycling. A cycling card is always better than any card like it without cycling um, because cycling basically lets this card become another card if you want it to be, just because... That's how it goes. You can always cash this card in for another one. You can spend two, toss this card, get another one. So cycling is a great, a great mechanic. I'm really glad to see them bringing that one back. Okay. You can see human soldier. They're definitely bringing some, some human stuff in here. Um, these artifacts aren't bad. We we have three mana artifacts that give us mana. One of three types. They're only going to go in very specific decks, but um, they are cycling too, which is nice. Okay. Um, and we got Karuga the Macro Sage. This is one of our companions. So we started off here with the companion, which is nice. Okay. I'm getting here. Cards are blurry. So let's see if we can't fix that a little bit here. Let's. Um, Let's play with our, our camera here. Configure. Let's see here. Uh, I don't know that I can fix that. Let's see if I can I can try here. No, definitely not your diabetes here, Matt. Um, it's something to do with the way that the this camera is angled here. Let's uh let's try something here. Um Actually, let's just do this. I'll be right back.
All right, folks, I'm back. Let's see if this looks any better. Can you guys see what's going on here? Uh, all right. Let's uh, keep on trucking here. Ideally, this should be a better camera and better visuals here, so let me know. Right, I'm seeing text is mirrored. We can fix that. How's that? I can fix anything now. All right. Cards look a bit better, but the text is mirrored. All right, let me know if anything is better now. So we've got Karuga. We've got a land and a token. A bunch of commons here. Alright, a bunch of commons and some uncommons are rare. Okay, let's keep going. See a lot of packs to get through tonight. We'll see how things go. Alright. You know, where there's a will, there's a way. There's always um, some sort of something you can do to improve the way things look. Alright, so we're going to go through here. If you see something that you want to check out, let me know. I did have to pull the, um, the fancy prices off the side but if you see something that you think is exciting let me know or if you want to you can pull up those prices on your own computer at home so um we have a mutate card here just very interesting here so this is you'll notice a lot of the really cool mutate cards the best thing about them is they have a thing that they do so for example this is a 4-4 with menace and whenever this creature mutates each opponent discards a card so if i were to example for example have karuga out and mutate this guy on top of Karuga, the card is now Cavern Whisperer, um, but it also still has Karuga's end of the battlefield effect, which isn't super useful, right? Um, but whenever it mutates, each opponent discards a card. So I mutated, everyone discards a card. If I were to put Cavern Whisperer underneath Karuga, the neat thing now is it's Karuga, it's a 5-4 still, a 5-4 with Menace, and each time I mutate on it, continually on that stack um, each opponent discards a card so this gives us a, a way to keep getting a value out of our cards that we already have all right let's keep going here and again shout out and chat if there's anything you want to see those are commons uncommons we get a sky cat sovereign as our rare here and we have a foil, this is interesting, a foil common with the comic book art. So I'll hold that up here so you guys can see here. Foil common with the comic book art, kind of fancy. I like it. All right, I'm just gonna set that aside because it is a foil and it is fancy. So I like to, I like to keep my foils separate just so we can see what we get. All right, and there's my uncommons. Let's keep going. Okay. I love this one here, Helica Glider, by the way. Uh, it's just a common, but it is a nightmare squirrel. The, the first time they've gotten squirrels back in standard um, for a long time. And it's a flying nightmare squirrel. Even though it doesn't say flying, it looks like it's flying. I think that's great. So super cool card on that one, by the way. This is a mutate with flying. It's actually a fox bird, which I also think is pretty cool. Mutate with flying. So again, the, the benefit here is you're going to mutate this onto something. For example, if I mutated this onto my Karuga that I had, I don't have a 5 4 with flying. So, two and a white makes something have flying and potentially make it look, get bigger. Super helpful. Love that. Okay, another one of our comic book arts. I do love the way those look, they're very cool. Myth, Mythos of Brokos. So,. Um, it's green green, but it has an ability for a blue and a black. If blue and black are spent to cast this spell, search your library for a card, put that card in the graveyard, shuffle your library, 
return up to two permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. Land, and this is our first punch out card here. You can see they're double sided, double sided punch out cards, and these things push out. I actually intend to keep a few of these um, because you just never know. You're going. This is the first time they've done this, and if these really take off, these might be worth something. I, I kind of doubt it, but you just never know. Um, and they're just really cool, so I intend to keep a few of those pristine just in case. I mean, there's going to be a whole bunch of them that are available after this, so. It's possible that they're completely worthless, but it's also possible they're worth something. So I'm going to keep a few of them nice just because it's cool to keep something like that nice. All right, so standard commons. Some of them are neat. Um, another one of our comic book arts. I think they look really nice again. Um, and some of these are going to be cool to have. Wynota, she's a, a our first mythic, um, and I think she's going to be one that people are really going to like. She's a Boros commander that does some things that we haven't seen her do before. She's just generally good value, um, generally just a really cool card, so I like her quite a bit. Uh, foil, Foil Fertilid, Fertilid's been around forever, but cool card for this set. And then we put our comments here. All right. Another mythic, Shovel, Bane of Monsters, 1-3 with Death Touch. At the beginning of your upkeep, if your opponents control no permanents with bounty counters on them, put a bounty counter on target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. Whenever a permanent an opponent controls with a bounty counter on it dies, you gain 3 life and draw a card. Um, sweet commander card, uh, fun card all around. I think the guy looks pretty cool. I think he's just a neat looking card all around. Um, and yeah, who knows, might be worth something in the long run. We'll have to see if it's a card people end up really liking. And another punch out card in the process as well. So, second mythic of the box. Um, you expect one mythic out of every eight. So, in 36 packs, I'm expecting what's that, four and a half, four and a half, five, somewhere in there. So, we'll see how we do. We're already at two in our first couple packs here, so it's not bad. Evolving Wilds, and the new art for that one. Love Evolving Wild. Been around forever, but still a great card. Good one to have. Ultimatum. This is the Ultimatum cycle. Um, they just did this for this set. Um, they've done Ultimatums before for other sets. The Ultimatums are typically expensive, require three types of mana. Um, in this case, it's two red, three white, two black. In this case, destroy all non-land permanents your opponents control. That's a big deal. That's, um, that's a lot. This is a cool card. Um, it's asking a lot mana-wise. I mean, two red, three white, two black is a lot to ask for. But um, overall, it's just a cool card. Um, and it's, it's definitely going to be a card people are going to want. Whether, it's not, whether or not it's something that they're going to want a lot of, it's hard to say. And this is not even a, uh, a token, just an advertisement for Arena. So we'll toss that. Here's an example of a card that puts a, a counter on something. Three mana, target creature gets plus two, plus two till end of turn. Put a flying counter on it. Important to note the flying counter is permanent. Doesn't say put a flying counter on it till end of turn. So it's a way, a way to give something flying um, forever. The plus two, plus two till end of turn, but the flying counter is permanent. So it does have flight now, long term, which is cool.
Again, if you have any questions, any cards you want to see again, any questions about a card that you're seeing, um, please pop up the question in chat there. I'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have um, or show anything else again for sure. I love this here, Neutralize. It's um, more expensive than a Counterspell, typically, but there's nothing like having a Counterspell stuck in... Um, nothing like having this, a Counterspell stuck in your hand and wanting to cycle it. So I'm always glad to have that, uh, something like that in hand. Audio is right, but the video is one pack behind. That's strange. All right, let's see if we can fix that. Um, it's got to have something to do with my... the way that my video is coming through here. So I'll work on fixing that as well. Okay, hopefully that cleaned things up for us. We'll see if that made things better. All right, so let's uh, shine that light in there again, and we should be good. All right, let's see if that cleaned it up for us. All right, hopefully we're better off now. We caught up. All right. So... Looks like we actually just pulled our third mythic. Remember, we're only supposed to get four, maybe five. We just pulled our third one in our top few packs here. This is Riel the Everwise. Another legendary creature here, Human Wizard. Riel the Everwise gets plus one, plus zero for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. Whenever you discard one or more cards for the first time each turn, draw that many cards. Okay. Another one of the comic book arts here. I do like this. Um, this one's pretty cool here. Certainly there's a possibility to pull up the seven mythics per box, but the average would be four to five if you're looking at just one per eight box, eight, one per eight. So we'll see what I get. I would love to pull seven. That would make me super happy. So we'll see what we get. Another mutate card here. And another companion, Yorian Sky Nomad. This one's companion cost is your starting deck contains at least 20 cards more than the minimum deck size. Um, this one obviously does not work in Commander if you're looking to do that. Uh, Flying 4 or 5, whenever Yorian enters the battlefield, exile any number of other non land permanents you control, you own and control. Return those cards to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. Okay. Another one of those crystals for the mana fixing there. Mythos of Vadrock. They have, I think they have a whole cycle of these mythoses here, of course. Um, they're rare. It costs two red, but if you spend the other two colors of mana on it, you get additional benefits to it.
right? Thieving Otter. I'm actually keeping this one uh, for my kid because it's cute. Hang on to that one. Another crystal. Another Mythos of Vedrock, look at that. It is possible to pull the same card two packs in a row. I did figure out what was causing the lag in the video, by the way. If I turn the light on on the camera, it does cause the lag in the video. So we'll see if we can do without the light. Um, if it gets too dark, please let me know. Hey, we got another mythic here. This is Luca Copper Coat Alcast. This is one of our um, planeswalkers for the set. This is a brand new planeswalker for this set. Pretty cool. Good to have. And a foil common. There are cards in the set as well, this one here, Mysterious Egg, which do not mutate themselves, but do get benefits when you mutate onto them. They're not on human, so if you mutate onto them, you do get benefits. A lot of that's to facilitate things in limited uh, draft, that kind of stuff, but still cool to have. Here's another one of those Mythos cards. This is two blue blue, but if you also spend green and red on it, you get additional benefits. Pacifism, Essence Scatter, Memory Leak, some of these cards are reprints too, which is nice to see them reprinting some of these cards. Nothing super expensive, but still nice to have some of these cards reprinted as well. Ah, here's Lutri. Lutri's an interesting card to mention. I'll keep that one for um, posterity's sake as well. That's a companion um, who was banned in Commander before the set even came out. Super cute as well, by the way. Elemental Otter. Uh, Lutri was banned because his companion cost is literally what you have to do to make a commander deck. Companion, each non land card in your starting deck has a different name. So um, there would be no cost to have Lutri in your deck. So this is a companion that is, was banned in commander as soon as companions were announced. This whole card is completely banned. Pretty cool card to have. Completely worthless, but a cool card to have. Um, and another worthless token in the same deck. Too. Second Karuga. 
I mentioned this before, this is your companion, your starting deck contains only cards with converted mana cost three or greater and land cards. Um, there's one that does the three or less, and I feel like that's the better card of the two. Um, I'm not super excited about Karuga, but we'll see uh, how he does moving forward. Um, he does draw a card for each other permanent you control with converted mana cost three or greater, which is a pretty good effect, but I just feel like overall he's not super exciting as a companion. I am surprised at how few of the comic book cards I'm pulling in past sets when I've pulled the um, the alternate art cards. I've gotten quite a few of them. We're not getting a lot of the uh, comic book cards in this set. Uh, and actually, of the different options of alternate arts to get, I feel like that's one I would have really liked to get. Oh, but hey, speaking of which, look at that. We get an alternate art rare here, Everquill Phoenix. I don't know that the card's actually worth anything, but very sweet looking art it's a full art all the way to the borders here um, very cool looking card so i bring that one up here so you guys can see that one um, that's a neat looking card mutate three in a red flying whenever this creature mutates create a red artifact token named feather with one sacrifice feather return target phoenix card from your graveyard to the battlefield tap so cool card overall and i was just complaining about not getting those cards so there we are and more punch out cards, which I'm definitely hanging on to. Quartz Wood Crasher. Um, is there a rare? 6-6 six, six, Trample. Whenever one or more creatures you control with Trample, deal combat damage to a player. Create a XX X Green Dinosaur Beast creature token with Trample, where X is the amount of damage this creature is dealt to that player. So you keep on making more and more Trample creatures, which is pretty cool. Foil Uncommon. Another Thieving Otter. Hang on to that one. Because it's cute. Another one of our comic book arts here. Parcel Beast. Mutate card. Don't know if Mutate's going to be good or not, but um, I think it's a cool mechanic either way. Another Mutate card here. Cub Warning with Mutate and Lifelink. Cathodic Reunion is a, uh, a reprint there. Cloud Piercer, another one of our comic book arts. Another comic book art here. So now nah, look, I'm getting more of them. I complain and look what I get. I'm glad to see that. Oh, and then we get a, our rare is an enchantment at the beginning of combat on your turn. Exile target red, white, or black creature card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a one, one. It gains haste to your next turn. Another crystal and a haunted nightmare. 
Menace when Hunted Nightmare enters the battlefield, target opponent puts a death touch counter on a creature they control. Seems kind of bad to me, but we'll see. And a trash card. Hey, I got one of the Triomes. Triomes are the three color lands. Um, they enter the battlefield tapped, and they have cycling three. So entering the battlefield tapped kind of sucks, but um, depending on the type of deck you're running, it might not be terrible. They, they tap for all three of a specific set of colors. In this case, it's black, blue, and green. Um, cycling three lets you toss it if you don't need it late game, which I do think is super good. First time they've done that. So I think that's pretty cool. Ooh, and we got a foil, rare foil gem razor. Um, I don't know that gem razor is all that good, but foil rares are always nice to have. So I'll set that one over in our foil pile. Never gonna complain about a foil rare. That would be silly. Jaws art there, liking that, that's kind of cool. Kogla the Titan Ape, that's kind of cool. It's uh, actually... There we go, okay. So let's pull these here. And Kogla the Titan Ape, so the company that owns Godzilla does not technically own the rights to um, King Kong. However, they wanted to do a King Kong card, so this is technically the King Kong card for the set. So, you can see it here. Um, this is our King Kong card, Kogla the Titan Ape. Pretty cool. So commons in this set, nothing is super exciting to look at here. Um, the, the usual stuff that you'd use in limited. Um, there's some fun things, lots of mutate cards in there to keep mutate working well. Um, but overall, nothing super exciting jumping out to me. Um, and for the rares, every now and then you'll get something that's interesting. But um, like for example, this one here, Frontland Felidar, it, it is what it is. Creatures you control with vigilance have one tap tap target creature. That's that's pretty limited usefulness, so uh, it's not a card that we're super exciting about. Super excited to find. But you, there's, there's lots. Is the Titan Ape a rare card? It sure is. It's um, right here. Kogla the Titan Ape. There he is. Kogla the Titan Ape rare card. He's right here. And Howbonder. Howbonder. Was he... A rare card as well there, or are you thinking of something else there? Aiden, how about her? Remind me, Aiden, where the how bonder was. My memory is not the best. Been common on top of my pile. Well, you know, 
my vision's also not the best. So, Sonorous Hellbonder here. It's a one Rectos Rectos hybrid mana. It's a 2 2 menace. Each creature you control with menace can't be blocked except by three or more creatures. So, usually, menace, of course, is two or more creatures. So, it's a cool card. Very much what we call a build around card, though. Obviously, you have to. Um, have lots of menace creatures. Not that you can't do that, it's just a, a thing that you'd have to, to specifically look to do. So um, I think that in this set, there's gonna be a fair number of those, so you could certainly do that. And we have another companion card here, Zerta the, Dr the Dawnbreaker, one um, Boros Boros, one uh, red or white, one red or white. Legendary Creature Elemental Fox, Companion, and for the Companion cost, you're looking at each permanent card in your starting deck has to have an activated ability. Now this actually, I think, is more um, possible than you'd think. If you look at the cards in front of us here, there's probably more cards that have activated abilities than you'd think there would be. For example, Kogla here has an activated ability when you pay one in the green to return target human you control to its owner's hand. If you do that, he's a 3-3. Three, three. And abilities you activate that aren't mana abilities cost two less to activate. And that's two, two generic mana less to activate. Um, that effect can't reduce the mana to the, in that cost to less than one mana. And it has an activated ability of its own. So Zerda, of course, would make um, Kogla, as Kogla's ability only cost one green instead of one in the green. So a uh, pretty cool card overall. We'll see. I don't know if it's going to see play or not, but it's one of the few that I think could. Uh, foil, tap land. And another tap land and a token. Okay, what do we got here? Trumpeting Nar in the uh, comic book art. Is that my first uncommon there? Yeah, okay. And, oh, there's our Huntmaster Liger you were talking about. Cool card. Could have gotten that as one of my cards I did got in my um, box topper, but I didn't because I got this cool Death Corona card. And we got our Turtle. Yudara Wandering Monster, another one that you can also get as um, one of your box topper cards. Trample Haste, cycling for one in the red. When you cycle Yudara Wandering Monster, shuffle into your library from your graveyard. If you've cycled a card named Yudara Wandering Monster four or more times this game, put it onto the battlefield from your graveyard instead, and it's a seven mana, eight, eight. So the idea is you're gonna play this in a, in a deck. You're not gonna obviously play this in Commander, you'll play this somewhere. Um, where you can play a bunch of them, cycle it a bunch of times um, to get, do some card draw, and then once you've done that a bunch of times, you get it for free, essentially, as a free 8-8 with, with Trample and Haste, which is pretty cool. Archipelagor is a um, foil uncommon, 7 mana, 7-7 seven, seven with Mutate, which is cool. Crystal, and another Yorian Sky Nomad, another one of those companions. Getting a lot of companions there, Aiden, not getting Loras. We'll have to see if I get that one or not. Um, if I do, I doubt I've got to sell it before they ban it, but you never know. Another Kogla, there he is. Another King Kong, gotta love King Kong. This is Ferocious Tigerilla. It's a um, 
tiger, gorilla, cat ape. That's pretty cool. I like the reprinting plummet in here, card that kills flying creatures because obviously we're um, going to have a lot of flying creatures with our mutates and all that stuff here. Whirlwind of Thought here. Um, one blue, red, and white. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, draw a card. It's an enchantment. Pretty sweet card, honestly. Nice to have um, in colors. I do that a lot, unfortunately, because it does cost three different colors of mana. Hard to pull off anywhere else. Love that art. That's probably one of my favorite of the comic book arts right there. I did get that one in foil too, I think, which is pretty sweet. Right. Titan's Nest is our rare. At the beginning of our upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard, exile a card from a graveyard, and add a colorless. Spend this mana only to cast a colored spell without X in its mana cost. And this is one of black, blue, and a green. Another punch out card there. Let's say once they're front loaded our um, our mythics, we haven't gotten one of those in a while, so we'll have to see if we pull any more mythics here before the end um, and where we go with that. Another Lutri. Nice. Again, not worth anything, but pretty sweet. Hard to get anyway. Nice to get another Planeswalker. Um, Narset or, um, oh, what's that one? Vivian would be cool to get for sure. Another one of our companions here, Umori the Collector. Companion's cost here is each non-land card in your starting deck shares a card type. And what you get for him is each, as Umori the Collector enters the battlefield, choose a card type. Spells you cast are the chosen card type, cost one less to cast. Pretty sweet card, actually. Um, it's in black and green. Um, and I don't think that that companion cost is actually as hard to pull off as one would think it would be. Honestly, um, having all creatures or all artifacts, since artifact creatures can be artifacts, etc., not as hard as you think it could be to pull off. Yeah, there's a comic book card I haven't gotten yet Foxbird. That's pretty cool looking. The Necro Panther. Lava Brink Venturers are rare. As it enters the battlefield, choose odd or even. As Lava Brink Venturer has protection from each converted mana cost of the chosen value. I like that card. Pretty cool. We are down to one. One, two, three, four, and five packs left. So. We'll see what we get here in the last five packs. Another companion card to hear the Orphan Guard. Each creature card in your starting deck is a cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, or beast. You get a 3-2 with Vigilance and each other creature you control. That's a Cat, Elemental, Nightmare, Dinosaur, or Beast. It gets plus one, plus one, and has Vigilance. I don't think that that deck's worth building, and I don't think that the benefit you get for the Companion cost is worth it necessarily. Um, the Strange Colors too, you have to play green and white only. Um, this just seems not worth it to me. 
But you never know what somebody's going to pull off, so. And we have another Yodaro here. This is that one where you have to have multiple of them anyway to really pull it off. Where you get the free 8 8 with Trample and Haste. Down to three left. Hey, we did get a Loris there, uh, Aiden. So we'll see. We'll see if that gets spanned or not. I'm curious myself. Um, you never know. Um, I don't know that I'd have time to sell it before it gets banned or not, but we will um, we'll check it out. So we're going to set that over here in our jackpot pile and see what happens. And we have a foil comic book, Dirge Bat. It's a foil rare in the comic book style. Um, pretty cool card. I don't know that it's worth anything, but we'll set that over here as well and see what we can get for that at two. Hey, we got an Alt Art Triome. Those I know are worth something. Um, probably not a ton, but they are worth something. The Alt Art Triomes with the um, comic book art for the Triome. Those are pretty sweet. Um, so I'm curious to see what that looks like these days. So I'll set that over here as well. And uh, a foil common. And our final pack here. Ten dollars, it's almost worth hanging on to it to see if they ban it or not. If they don't ban it, it'll shoot up, but I can't necessarily see them not banning it at this point. Hey, we got our final mythic here. Vadrock Apex of Thunder. Vadrock is a blue, a red, and a white for a 3-3 mutate. Flying first strike, whenever this creature mutates, you may cast target non-creature card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. Okay, so let's go over here and um, pull up our prices here and see where we're at and see if we got anything super exciting. All right. We definitely didn't get Fiend Artisan, or Kinnan, or Luminous Broodmoth. We definitely got Loros. Uh, we got a Luka. Let's see here. I know we got a Loros. And I know we have a Luka. Luka's in here somewhere. I figured he'd be worth something. Where's my Luka? There he is, Luka. Uh, we did not get Vivian or Narset. We got a Winota, though. Where's my Winota at? She's in here somewhere. Winota. Winota, Winota, Winota. There's Winota. Okay. Uh, the Zagoth Triome. That might be one of the ones I got the... Might be the one I got the alternate art on, actually. Yep, the Zagoth Triome is the one I got the alternate art on. And... Ozlov I did not get, Regra and Triumph did not get, Riel I got, uh, Riel the Everwise is in here, let's pull that out, and take a look at Riel, there's Riel, 
and uh, let's drop this down here so you guys can see. Okay, Riel, we got General Cruz, we did not get Catcher Time, we did not get the uh, Narset Emblem. We actually did pull one of those too. I'm surprised it's worth anything, but we do have a Narset Emblem in here. I know I saw that. There's my Narset Emblem. Uh, Riel. Uh, that's about all we got from that list. So we're looking at, with Luros being at 10, and Luca being roughly 10, that's 20 plus Winota at 5 or 25. Zygoth Triumph is probably worth a little more than what the 5 is there. So you're talking 35, 30, 40, and Riel at 45. So we're talking about 50 bucks just in cards here, plus um, extras. So not bad at all. And we'll see where we go from there with the uh, foils, etc. Um, and what was the Space Godzilla? Space Godzilla was at 18, 20 bucks as well. Although, like I said before, I think I'd be happy to hang on to that one. So, before we leave you tonight, any questions, concerns, thoughts, anything extra, any cards here you'd like to see one more time? If not, I'm going to be packing these up and um, counting my money soon here. So I'll let you know once I decide what I'm selling, what we ended up with, because that's always interesting to see. Alrighty. This is what we ended up with. These are the high-end cards. These are the uncommons. And then these are my commons here. Pretty much just bulk at this point. We don't usually keep our commons. These are our lands that are not worth anything. And then our tokens right there. And then of course, one last look right here. Let's go ahead and reset the camera so you guys can actually see this. There we go. One last look at Space Godzilla, Death Corona. Collector's item if there ever was one. This one I'm going to hang on to for a while. Alright folks, it's been fun. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you another night. Take care.